Hello, it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in June. I had a pretty good month. Uh, they definitely weren't all winners, but I had a few four star reads, a four and a half and a five star. So yeah, I definitely can't complain. First up was Last Days by Adam Neville. This is the second novel of his that I've read. The first one was The House of Small Shadows, which was really creepy and awesome, and Last Days was also really creepy and awesome. It is about a cult called the Temple of the Last Days, which ended in a massacre in 1975. And in the present day, we're following indie filmmaker Kyle. He specialises in documentaries and he is in debt quite significantly and he's also still looking for his big break in the industry and something that is really going to make his name. And he is approached by producer Max who wants him to film a documentary about the Temple of the Last Days. And the production schedule is completely laid out. He's going to be going to London, to France, and to the desert in Arizona, and everything's mapped out to the last minute. All of the interviews have been lined up, so really all Kyle needs to do is turn up with his friend and co-filmmaker Dan and shoot the thing. But the more Kyle and Dan get involved in filming about this cult, they start to uncover more and more layers of what actually happened. And this was really well written, I really enjoy his writing, it was really easy to get into, really fast paced, I really enjoyed Kyle as a character, you know he's not like 100% likeable but I could definitely feel for him and I definitely wanted to read more of his story. I thoroughly enjoyed his banter, especially with his mate Dan. It's just, yeah, very British banter and I really enjoyed it. And Adam Neville has created a whole mythos around this cult and there are so many elements and layers to it and it was just so incredibly impressive that, you know, it wasn't just the story from A to B, there were just so many intricate layers and pieces to the puzzle. He clearly has no shortage of ideas and he's also, yeah, really talented in the way he tells his stories. This one definitely had some creepy moments and if you like stuff about cults or like found footage stuff then I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed this one and I gave it four stars. Next up I read The Reaping by Bernard Taylor. This was originally published in 1980 and this particular edition is a recent reissue from Valancourt Books as part of their Paperbacks from Hell series. And I did a separate review video for this so I'll link that below if you want to check it out. But this one was excellent, I gave it four and a half stars. It's about an artist called Thomas who is commissioned to paint a portrait and he goes to Wolvercombe House and stays in this mansion until he's finished painting the portrait. But while he's there, he notices some strange goings on in this house and with its inhabitants and its employees. And he uncovers something that he definitely wasn't expecting and neither was I, but it was wonderful. It was the perfect mix of like a quiet, slow horror, but also plenty of craziness. This definitely went in a direction I wasn't expecting. It was a super fast read for me. I could not read it fast enough. I just, I needed to know what happened and I highly recommend it. Next, I read Somebody Come and Play by Claire McNally. This was originally published in 1987 and I also have a separate review video for this one. So I will link that below as well. This one is a creepy kid story. It's about a 10 year old girl called Cassie and her friends. One summer they meet a new girl called Nicole and she persuades them to go play in the creepy Hollenbeck house where a tragedy occurred. And Cassie's mother forbids her to go to the Hollenbeck house but persuaded by her friends she ends up going over there and 
lots of strange things start happening in the local neighbourhood and alongside this there is a police detective who is investigating something that happened here and he is convinced that something supernatural is going on. This was a fun read and it definitely kept my attention throughout. It didn't blow me away or anything but I did enjoy it so I gave it three stars. Next is my five star read of the month which is The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. This was originally published in 1989 and it's based on the true story of Sylvia Likens. This follows a girl called Meg and her younger sister. Their parents die in a car accident so they are sent off to go live with an aunt and Meg becomes the victim of abuse at the hands of the aunt along with her sons and some of the other local neighbourhood kids. The story is told from the perspective of one of those kids, David, who was 12 years old at the time and the story is written by him as an adult looking back on what happened. And I knew this wasn't going to be an easy read, I knew the content was going to be brutal and it certainly is, but it was also an incredibly compelling read and I think Ketchum's writing is why you read The Girl Next Door. His writing really is fantastic. Once I finished reading it, I was like, how do you rate a book like this? But I really couldn't think of any reason not to give it five stars. So there you go. And I was wondering about maybe doing a separate review video for this one. So if you'd be interested in that, let me know. But yeah, this was a five star read for me. Next up, as a bit of a palette cleanser, I picked up The Grave by Christopher Pike and I just thought this was going to be a fun horror tale, maybe something supernatural. The cover and the description on the back make it sound like, you know, somebody's coming back from the dead and I just thought that sounded like a really good time. And it's hard to say much more about this one without spoiling it, so if you don't want to be spoiled for the grave then you can skip ahead to when I'm no longer holding this book up but this was a real disappointment for me unfortunately it ended up not being horror or supernatural at all it was a bit sci-fi um, this whole coming back from the dead thing is a scientific experiment and also there might be aliens involved and it was just quite repetitive and the ending just came out of nowhere and ended up being some kind of save the planet environmental message. You know, which is a great message, but it just came out of nowhere and didn't make any sense. So yeah, unfortunately I didn't really enjoy this one and I gave it two stars. Things picked up again with The Red Tree by Kaylin Arkinen. I read this for Pride Horrorthon, which was a horror readathon to celebrate Pride Month, and this features lesbian characters. So if you're looking for some horror with that representation, then this is a great one. And I also read this as a buddy read with a couple of Instagram friends, Tom and Mark. So this was a great book to do as a buddy read because there's a lot to discuss and it was an excellent read. It's the second book I've read by her, the other one I read was Silk which I really enjoyed too. This one is quite different but still just as good. It's about an author called Sarah who moves to a remote house in order to focus on writing her next novel and while she's there she uncovers a manuscript from someone who was writing about the red tree which is a tree on the property of this house. There's a lot of local legend and folklore surrounding this tree and Sarah becomes obsessed with reading about it. The story is told through Sarah's journals and she is typing out passages from this manuscript as well so you get to read that along with her. Things get stranger and stranger and it becomes a question of is there really something weird going on or is it all in her head? This was a fantastic read. It has some Lovecraftian elements. It's also a bit like House of Leaves. There's a story within a story and things are not quite as they seem. It's hard to say too much more about it 
but I highly recommend it. I ended up giving this four stars. It was a really good read, really well written. I really enjoyed her writing style. Caitlin Kiernan definitely took a lot of inspirations from other things, but really made something of her own here. And like Adam Neville's Last Days, the fact that she created this whole story and this whole legend and so many layers to it, I just find mind-blowing. It's really impressive and really well done. This one kept me thinking long after I read it, in a good way, and yeah, it was just a really great read. I gave it four stars. Then I read a short story collection. This was Darkest Hours by Mike Thorne. This one came out just a couple of years ago, and I think the first time I heard of it was through Stephanie, and that's what she read. And it had been on my, you know, to read list for quite a while, so I figured, why not finally pick it up? And this was enjoyable. It was a bit of a mixed bag, as most collections are. Some I really liked, some were okay, and then some I didn't really care for too much. But the good ones were really good. My favourite one of the collection is called The Auteur. It's about someone who is a big horror film fan and he works at a video rental place and a girl that he works with is also really into horror and she tells him that she has made some of her own films and would he like to come over and watch them. And this one was really well written, really creepy and dark and I just loved everything about it. It was a fantastic story. Some other ones that I really enjoyed were Hair, which was really gross but really well written, A New Kind of Drug, let's see, Fear and Grace, Long Man, and yeah, I think those few were my favourites of the whole collection. There were some other good ones in there that I enjoyed. I did rate each story individually and then came up with an average, which was three and a half stars, so still a pretty good read. Next up I tried The Summer Job by Adam Caesar, and this one is billed as a satanic thriller, which sounded just like my cup of tea. Unfortunately I ended up DNFing this one, I got about a third of the way through and decided to put it down. It's about a girl called Claire, I think she's in her early 20s and she's out of university and she's working as a waitress and she's splitting up with her boyfriend and she just wants life to be a bit better and she ends up applying for a job working in a bed and breakfast out in the country. So this seems like the perfect opportunity for her to get away from things for a bit but of course the locals are maybe not as nice as they first appear. And to begin with I was quite enjoying this, I was enjoying his writing and getting to know Claire and the other characters, but after a while it just lost my interest and I got about a third of the way through and you know when you're reading something but your mind wanders to other books? That's what was happening here, so I just felt like there's no point forcing it if I'm not enjoying it. So I ended up putting it down, but like I say, I did enjoy his writing, so I would be interested to read something else by him. So if you've read any others by Adam Caesar that you would recommend, let me know. And last up, I read Harvest Home by Thomas Tryon. This was originally published in 1973. And technically I finished this on July 1st, but let's go with it. And this is about a family, a husband and wife and their teenage daughter, who want to get out of the city and start a new life in the country. And they stumble upon this quaint little village called Cornwall Coombe. So they move in and they're settling in and getting to know the locals. It's a farming village and Everyone works very traditionally, so they don't have any modern like tractors and such like. They do everything very old school and they have a lot of very traditional beliefs. Throughout the year they have festivals celebrating certain parts of the farming year and this all culminates with Harvest Home. I really enjoyed this one. It has been on my to read list for quite some time, so I'm glad I finally picked it up. It is a slow burn for sure, but there was enough to keep me interested and enough mystery to 
made me want to read more and find out what was going on. There are a lot of really interesting characters in here. There's a widow in the village called Widow Fortune, who is kind of a matriarchal figure for the community. There is a girl called Missy, who the villagers believe has special powers of premonition. Yeah, there were definitely a lot of really interesting elements in here, and even though it's a slow build, the climax is pretty fantastic and definitely worth the, the build up. I ended up giving this 4 out of 5. I was hoping that this would be a 5 star read for me, but it just fell a little short. I think the reason was I just didn't really connect with the main characters, especially the protagonist Ned. Um, I think if I had connected with him and his family a bit more, I might have got a bit more invested, but because I didn't have that, it was just lacking a little bit, but still an excellent story, an excellent read, and I'd definitely still recommend it. I also have a copy of The Other, which I think is Thomas Tryon's most famous novel, so I definitely want to get to that one before too long. So that was everything I read in June, pretty good month overall. Let me know if you've read any of these and tell me what you thought, or let me know what your favourite book of the month was. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!